Hey guys, how are you? Welcome to my living room. No worries, you're not going to watch me eat today. Today is a day where I'm going to do something inside because it is a typical November day. It's quite grim outside. It's a drizzle for the entire day already. And I kind of thought I might go outside and do something, but whenever I got ready and I just left the house, I was like, no. I'm not feeling it today, so I'm going to do something completely different with you today and it's going to be the kickstart of my Thanksgiving decoration. Same as with my Halloween decoration, something I've never done before and I'm really excited about it. And I kind of mapped out in my head what I want to do, which direction I want to go and what colors I want to use. So I went to the garden center and I looked at all beautiful kind of flowers and then I had the pots with orange flowers in my head and I thought, no, still not feeling it, orange just isn't my color and let's see maybe next year definitely not this year so this year I'm going to focus on all different kind of red tones red foliage red flowers really excited about it and I want to incorporate into my decoration something a little more personal something that I love to do and for those of you who follow me on Instagram you've seen it already in one of my stories so I like to do paper flowers and this is something where I think it fits quite beautiful in this autumnal decoration for Thanksgiving giving and the area that I'm going to stage and decorate is again the main entrance to our house so there is a little cover over it where I feel this is good so the flowers won't be hit by heavy rain so I could really make it work there I've already prepared one flower to show you basically how it's looking and what I want to explain you in today's video so for those of you who are a little bit into crafting Today's video is going to be your video and for those of you who are only into like planting and staging, stay tuned, tomorrow will be part two and then you get to see what I'm going to do with all of the things that I'm going to work on today. So this is kind of like how one of those paper flowers looks like, I've just come a little closer. And as you can tell, this is kind of just like a little fantasy flower for me. Um, I sometimes also do replicas really of flowers that you find in your garden, which is great fun and a challenge as well. But for this, I thought I just wanted to have something that fits in my color scheme and don't focus on trying to mimic something that is growing out there in the garden. And what I want to do is basically, uh, if you remember, we've had quite a storm here in the garden, unfortunately, and it knocked down some of the branches of one of the bigger trees at the end of the garden, which isn't even our tree. But uh, that tree kind of like smashed parts of our fence and also a lilac that is flanking our property. But I checked it, the lilac's looking still quite all right and I think it's gonna bounce back for sure. But you know what, the good thing is like, I could just take some of these branches now because lilac is something I'm hesitant to cut because it doesn't grow that fast. And if you cut it, you kind of take back next year's flowers. But since they were kind of like cracked anyways, I was like, great, I can take some of those branches, clear them up and use them for my Thanksgiving decoration because I really like what happened in the Halloween decoration where I was using branches. So I thought I'm just gonna use the same method and idea, a little different of course, for my Thanksgiving. And you already see here on the top what I kind of want to do. I want to put these flowers that I craft on these branches here, not like full, but just here and there, sprinkle them through and let's see how I'm gonna do it, how far I get. But this is my general idea for what I'm gonna do with these branches basically. In general, when it comes to my Thanksgiving decoration, I want to focus a little bit on sustainability. I don't want to use anything that's like plastic or artificial really, or at least do things that I can recycle again, reuse again. So after this project, I'm definitely going to keep the branches with the flowers, maybe take them inside, maybe decorate them here, maybe take the flowers off the branches, store them for another project and just put the branches on the attic for another project that comes next year, let's see. But I really want to focus on all natural materials. So let's get down to business basically now with the paper flower. So I prepared a little bit here and I just wanna show you what you need if you wanna do some paper flowers as well. And for those of you who watch me from the United States, you're in great luck because pretty much most of the materials that I'm working with today, I bought at Hobby Lobby and Michael's, so you have really easy access to them. Whilst for me in Europe, sometimes I would, honestly, I ordered some of those things again from the States, needed to pick them up at the airport, pay the taxes and all of that, because I just couldn't find it in Europe, or maybe I just done a terrible job with my research, who knows. But I just, I just stick to my guns and know what I like. So what I'm gonna show you, this is basically what you need for the project. First thing, quite easy. So if you do paper flowers, of course you need some sort of paper. And I'm using a crepe paper. 
kind of looks like that. It comes from a roll. And when you use paper like this, um, I've already basically prepared them and cut them into little stripes. So this is what I'm going to work with today. Make sure that you use a paper that's not too thick and too sturdy because if you kind of like mold your petals, what you want is that the paper kind of like has a nice texture and you can kind of like bend it in a direction because when it's too thick, you can't do it. I've tried it, so I'm speaking of experience. Uh, it shouldn't be flimsy, but it shouldn't be too thick either. So this is like your starting point, of course. Then what you need is basically some nice scissors. And I have two scissors that I mainly work with. So this is kind of like my small metal scissor and it's quite spiky and small, but it's so delicate that I could really just like get in there and you can really work through all different shapes and whatever you want to do on your paper. And the second one is one of these like crafting papers. I just come closer where the blade actually has like a pattern in it. They come with all different kind of patterns. And the nice thing about it is if you like cut around your single petals, you can create this kind of like frilly, frou-frou look that sometimes makes it look a little more whimsical. Or if you're doing, for example, poppies, it makes it look even a little more realistic, which is really nice. So next to my scissors, I need some kind of wire basically, because you need to like just put your flowers on something and I always use a metal wire. I like to use black metal wire, but depending on what project you're doing, you can also just use gold or rose gold or green maybe even. And I use kind of a thin one because I want to attach the flowers to the branches. But if you really want to use these for making, for example, like a paper flower arrangement, I would suggest use like a thicker wire that you can buy at the florist, for example. Then what you need uh, kind of like something that you put in the center of a flower, of each flower. And I've got some metal beads here in a nice kind of like a metallic color, kind of autumnal colors. I've got this like rose gold, I got kind of like a red tone, I got these kind of like dark bronze ones, different sizes for different size of flowers as well. Then what I got, this is something really important. So this is kind of like again a crap paper, but it has like a glue in it, so it's sticky and it comes on a roll as well. And that comes in brown and in white. So I'm gonna use a brown one, of course, today because when I attach the single flowers to the brown branches, I wanna make it look as realistic as possible. But if you use a white one, which I sometimes like to use as well, the nice thing there is you can uh, color up the white one later on to make it look green, for example. And then it matches like however colors you were using in your flowers, for example. Then the last thing you need, of course, are some kind of colors because I use white paper. You can also use paper that's already colored, but then you're kind of a little limited sometimes to color shading. So I prefer doing it with a white one. And since I come from a fashion design background, I have a lot of like uh, illustrating pans because I still really love to illustrate sometimes. So I'm using Copic pans because they have a really nice texture and they're very easy to work with. So for those of you who don't know how they look like, this is how a Copic pan actually looks like. Um, you can also use aquarelle color, of course, any kind of color, ink, whatever you want. I've used it all to make it work. Um, what you don't want to do is something that makes it kind of like sticky or that uh, changes the texture of the paper. I would personally not put like acrylic on top of it necessarily because then it's a little difficult to mold it and the color doesn't sink into the paper. While these pans, fake acrylic looks quite well, uh, well, so they sink into the paper. So what I do basically, I've prepared my colors already and I work my way from the lightest to the darkest color. And all you do is use the side of the pan that's a little flat and thicker and kind of just like start at one point of the paper, just really quickly go over it. I'm not going to do the entire paper now because otherwise the video is going to be like three hours long. And then work your way through from the lightest to the darkest color and always kind of like go a little deeper into like deeper, like lower in the paper actually. Is that correct English? Lower? I'm not sure. Um, and then really just like also don't overthink it. Don't try and think like about every single line streak that you're doing because the beauty really comes from making it look irregular. Um, the flowers are going to be in red tones but I'm also going to put a little bit of purple in it because I thought when I was testing the colors that it just gives a different dimension to it. So really think sometimes a little outside the box and also observe what nature is doing because there you really get to see uh, how the colors are looking. As a last color I use a dark brown because of the branches and I think it's also nice when the inner part of the flower gets darker while the outer part of the petals actually feel 
a little lighter. I think this is a more realistic look for it. So this is kind of like what you end up with and it dries really fast. So this is what I like to use with Copic pans because if I would have done it with Aquarelle, needed to wait forever and this process is a lot faster because I could use so many colors now for the shading. So I hope you get to see it a little bit how it's looking now. Already prepared something of course. So I already prepared a stripe like this basically and what you do now is you kind of fold it and then cut it into the shape of the petal however you want to cut it and just your creativity there's there are no limitations to your creativity when it comes to that you can really just try out whatever you want to do so when you fold it just define the width basically of what uh, each individual petal should be like and now I come in with my metal scissors like these kind of spiky small ones and what I do I start cutting from the bottom from the base where the darkest color is and then I kind of just like a half moon, just cut in here. Whoop. There we go. So this is the first side and then you kind of just like twist around and just mirror it pretty much on the other side. And again, you don't need to mirror it 100%. I mean, it is a flower petal and you're still gonna mold it and work with that. So don't overthink those things. So see, this is kind of how it should look like. And now I come in with these special scissors that have like the pattern in the blade. And what I do now is kind of just like snip all the way around it so that the edge, I kind of define the edge and make it look a little frilly because I think this is just like a cute look for these blossoms that I'm going to work on today. And as you can tell, you're going to end up with a little bit of a mess after your project like this. So don't clean before you do this. So now what you end up with is this pile basically of all kind of small petals. You can just take them apart. And this is how one single would look like at the moment. So now you want to shape it basically and bring it into the shape of a petal so you can work with that. So all you do now is kind of like fold at the base of it. So the dark part needs to be folded. And again, there is not really a way on how to do it. You kind of just like fold it together, hold it with your fingers like this, then take the entire top petal and then you kind of like twist the bottom part and you can twist it into both directions a little bit, back and forward, back and forward. And by doing that, you can already tell that you got a little bit of a shape going on. And now this is why you use crap paper, because you come in with your, both of your thumbs and you can kind of like stretch it a little bit and bend it into a direction on how you want to have it so that you kind of have a nice hollow shape basically going on here. So this is the look that I want to have. I'm not going to do all of those now. I've already prepared a little bit so we can continue faster. The next thing that I'm going to do is, so I've done my petals now. So you need to have some sort of like center of it, like the stamen or something. You can actually buy stamens on Etsy or I think even on Hobby Lobby again. Uh, I bought some on Etsy quite a while ago and they're nice. But for these kind of flowers, I also make them out of paper. And there's a quite easy technique on how to do it as well. So again, you just have like a kind of a skinny stripe of paper. And then I just use two different brown tones, kind of like a little lighter one, like a nice maroon tone. I'm just gonna put up here. And then the darker one that goes here at the base. And again, you kind of like blend over it. So this is all you do, we've done the entire stripe. And this is kind of like what I end up with basically. So one side is lighter and one side is darker. And exactly same as with the petals basically, you're just folding it now. So you end up with a little bundle here. So just a couple of times, however you like it. I mean, again, that's, now there's really no system about it at all. And now I just come in again with my scissors, with my small spiky ones. And what I do is I hold it here at the darker part so that the light part is on top. And you, now you cut in at the light part and basically just like, depending on how deep you want to do it, like it's more than two thirds, I would say. And then kind of just like you have these strings that you cut in there. So maybe a millimeter, around a millimeter, I would say. And just next to it. Quite easy. All right. Make sure you don't cut the bottom because this is what holds it together. This is the one important thing you should really focus on. Unfold the entire bundle again. Okay. 
So this is kind of what you end up with. So you have all these like fine kind of like stripes basically here all attached in a row. This is quite long though for the stamen so I can just actually just take half of it. So what I'm going to do now is show you how I make a flower. So I've already prepared my petals here and each flower what I'm going to do with you today consists of six petals. So there are three in the inside and three on the outside. So first thing you got to do is use your metal wire and I just need like a tiny string of it basically, not a lot, that's probably already too much. And then a metal, like a, it's not metal, it's plastic actually, so it's so much about sustainability, but I'm going to reuse the flowers. So just one bead that goes in the center, so just like string it up here and wire it up. Ooh. Okay, put it in the middle, kind of in the middle, and then what you do is you hold your bead press the wire quite firm on your bead and then you just twist it basically so that the bead can't fall off and can't move anymore. So this is kind of like what you want to have. And the next thing, now you come in with that sticky tape that comes on a roll. So you just take it and press it really close to the wire, really close to the bead, that is important. Just twist around a couple of times. This is the only frickly part about the entire thing, honestly, for me at least. I mean, everybody's probably different, but this is the only thing where I'm sometimes like, why is it not working how I want it to work? Okay, this is what you want to have. So you want to have your wire. So basically it's like two wires actually, if you're really taking it serious. And then you've got like your bead on top sitting here, it can't move anywhere. And then you've got like this kind of like bandage of your sticky tape at the bottom. Now you come in with a brown strip of paper that kind of mimics the stamens. So what you do is you just attach it to your sticky paper. So here you see it can't fall off, it can't go anywhere. And what you do now is you don't just wrap it around, you kind of just like press it basically, kind of just, I don't want to say mush it together because that sounds a little brutal now, but you just like work your way around it so it's equally around everywhere. So the Bead sits in the center and then you've got like the brown stamens all the way around it. Hold it tight, come in with the paper again, with the uh, sticky tape actually, and just tie around it. Okay. That looks good. That looks well good. Cute. So this is kind of like what you want to have at the end. You can see already there's something little pointy here. So what I would do is just like come in with my scissors and just clean it up a little bit if I wanted to. So you can still refine this part as well a little bit. So this is kind of like how you want to have it look at the first step. Next thing you do is you come in with your petals now. So I use three on the inside, three on the outside. And you kind of want to make sure that they sit like um, equally all the way around it. So I just take the first one and just press it onto the sticky tape. So it sits here. So this is kind of like how it should look like now. And what you do now is I can just hold it, come in with this tape and again, just work my way around it. good. So I've got three sitting all the way around it. So this is how it looks now. The next thing is the outer layer and the outer layer what you don't want is that each petal sits exactly where the first one sits. You want to make sure that they sit basically in between two petals. So you always have like the gap here, a gap here and a gap there. So three gaps. So the center part of this goes actually really in the middle of those gaps here because when you open your flower after you tied it all up, you have like a really nice distribution of like inner and outer petals actually. So I just go around it now. And the last one. See, actually the actual making of the flowers, if I wouldn't explain it, if I would just do it, goes pretty fast. What takes the most amount of time I would say is really like 
coloring up and um, molding actually also. Like really when you have the single petals looking, oof, they still stick together, looking like this and then really kind of like molding them into a good shape. So this is all there is basically. So this is what you have now. This is what you end up with now. So now it comes apart when you kind of like start to break it open a little bit and make it look like a real flower, hopefully. Or as close to a real flower as possible. Oh, cute. I like the colors already, honestly. I can really see how the colors are all coming together. So I've got some, a lot of different things in like red tones that I want to use for decoration. So this is how the flower looks like now. Isn't it cute? I think it looks really cute. And the next thing you do now is basically you take a branch that you want to work with. So there's already tied up on something else. So just put it here. And then you have your two strings of metal wire. So this is why I use metal wire like this for these projects. So I could just tease them apart a little bit and just select a branch. So this is a small flower. So obviously this goes on the top and then I work my way through with a little bigger ones. So what you do is you just place it where you want to have it. And then just tie around, try and make it quite nice and firm because you don't want that it can move around too much. And that's not really a system, really just like find your own system if you want to do something like this, what works best for you. I'm not using hot glue or anything because if I use metal wire, I can still get them off easily and yeah, just a little less glue that I'm working basically. So I feel this is probably a little more environmental friendly and now you can basically just like press the flower because it's still on the inside everything is metal which is nice so you can press it in the shape on where you want to have it oh that's so nice on top of it here so this is kind of like how it would look now so what i'm gonna do in the next couple of hours now i'm gonna speed up the entire process of course and just make a lot of petals and stamens and whatever, make a lot of flowers, time all to my branches and then show you how the end result is going to look like. You guys, I've made it. I prepared two branches. So one I already finished yesterday and this is the one that I did today actually. So I think in total it took probably about five hours out of me. So just that you have an estimate on how much time you need to uh, calculate and if you want to do something like this. And I'm really happy with the result just looking at it. As I said, it's kind of like a fantasy branch so it doesn't reflect anything that's really growing in my garden. But I think it looks really cute com how it comes together. And what I want to do basically, kind of similar to what I did in my Halloween decorating video, is I just want to use the branches and put them in a pot. So both of them kind of like this. Uh, so they're kind of like the centerpiece and then underplant them and now I thought maybe I even have like some Christmas decoration birds or something because Christmas is also red, gold and green. So I might have some red birds that I might even pop in there here and there 
just as an idea, I need to see and figure what I'm gonna do. Um, I hope you enjoyed today's project. It was something completely different to what I normally do, but I still stayed in the floral world at least. So I think this is what kind of keeps it still together. And this is also something like um, when I do these projects, I really wanna show you everything and take on this entire journey, what I'm doing. So when it comes down to the decorating part, I really love doing stuff like this. And I think this is also kind of unique and gives it a personal touch because it's something you can't buy in a store. You can kind of like really make it your own and give it your own stamp. So I hope you're excited for tomorrow because then is when I go outside, use these branches and really get my hands in there and start the staging and decorating process. So can't wait to welcome you tomorrow in my garden again. Take care, have a lovely day, bye.